Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 12th meeting of the Newtown Township Board of Supervisors. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, as is our custom, we observe a moment of silence. Uh, I don't have any inspirational thoughts to share this evening, except for uh, maybe just uh, giving a chance to settle ourselves and take a couple of deep breaths. So please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. Now please uh, join the board as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Lewis, are there any changes to the agenda this season? No changes, Mr. Chairman. No special actions. That brings us to our first round of public comment. Uh, we'd ask if you have a public comment to come forward and um, speak to the microphone. Is this is for anything not on the agenda. Sure. Please come up and use the podium and turn on the microphone. And... There's a little button there. Gotcha. And please introduce Testing yourself. Testing one, two. Yeah. Please inter introduce yourself and tell us yeah. what, what community you're from. I'm uh, from Delancey Court, across the street. I didn't need GPS to get here today, so I'm going to say. Yeah, my name is Bill DeSalvo. Uh, I wanted to make uh, mostly comments about the road conditions uh, in, around here. And uh, hopefully, maybe we can get the... Uh, township supervisor to, to be able to be in, to influence somebody to at least put us on a schedule of when they're going to be repaving. Route 413 uh, Durham Road, I think in some places is dangerous. As you're traveling south from here, the first time you see something that's not very good is be just before you get to the the vineyard on the right side. There are, it's pretty bad. If you have a small car, there's a possibility you could. Sway, I don't know. Then when you keep going down, about uh, 100, maybe 150 yards before the, you get to the um, village, the road turns. And again, on the right side, it's really bad. And then uh, right after that is another bad part. So both of those plus the one up there are in bad condition. What I heard what, back when is that we were supposed to get it repaved back like in 2012 time frame. Here we are at you know, 2023, and when I looked at the PennDOT schedule, it's from, to, what was it, 2026 schedule? I didn't see it on the list. So I'm here to find out you know, what's going on and also what can we do, uh, the township supervisor, to try to get something done. Uh, Mr. Manager, isn't uh, 413 a PennDOT road? Yes, it is. And PennDOT would have to repair it, not the township. So Correct. I, but I guess we could try to be in contact with PennDOT if possible to see if when they're going to get to it. Yeah. Either that or uh, your local legislature. Yeah, I knew it was PennDOT Road, but maybe we can be an influence to say, maybe get a hold of the uh, senator, Santisier, and say, you know, do something for us because we're, uh, we're a community of people that pay a lot of taxes. And, and to see that road, and I tried not to uh, use that road, even to have to go north. Oh, by the way, the problem starts around uh, Stoopville Road and goes all the way down to the village. That's the problem. But the mm -hmm. biggest problem is from here down to the village. Sure. So that's my one uh, first comment. And Didn't that, they um, do something further up close to Stoopville? I remember there was... They did some minor repairs uh, when there was some complaint. I forget if it was uh, Perry Warren or somebody. Yep. And, um, you know, there was an incident there. Yeah. What I've noticed is they keep patching the patches, and they, they don't last very long. They put them on about two, three months later, you know, got problems. 
it's got to be repaved. It was supposed to be repaved back when, but we get pushed out. I don't know how, why we're being pushed out, but it's not happening. All right, the other thing has to do with uh, Delancey Court. Uh, recently, uh, there was a final inspection of Delancey Court, and it was between uh, Toll Brothers and the township people, engineers. And, and we, at Delancey Court, were left out of the final inspection. And so I came here to find out, can somebody look into it and find out why we were left out? Because there are issues with the road over at Delancey Court. I think there are structural uh, problems, and of course, there is also a lot of cosmetic, uh, ugly looking thing. So I would hate to have to sell my house right now because uh, I'm sure I wouldn't get as much as a few months ago. So those are my two comments. So if somebody can look into why we were left out, maybe they can have, now that some of the, fix, some of the fixes were done, maybe we can re-inspect the fixes to make sure that they were done correctly. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. DeSalvo. Thank you. <laughs> and I was going to mention uh, Perry Warren's office as well, but I think Mr. Mack mentioned it. So, very good. Any others, please? Uh, <clears throat> good evening. I'm here to talk about the funding for the uh, Tara Boulevard RRFB, the pedestrian upgrade. Can you identify yourself for the record, yes. please? What's that? Can you identify yourself, please? Your, your yeah. name? Name and address. For yeah, yeah, record. I've got a, um, so, um, Mark Bjorkman. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I've, um, I've lived in Newtown Walk since 2020. I'm a retired uh, aerospace engineer, owner of a um, Newtown township-based technology and engineering consulting company. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge all the unwavering leadership and drive of a good chunk of the people on this side of the room who have, uh, who have worked very hard to try to get this um, pedestrian upgrade done. And my highest admiration goes to Valerie over here, who's, who's been our kind of our fearless leader. She uh, approached me last fall asking if I could lend my engineering and problem-solving expertise to the crosswalk issues. Uh, since then, I've consulted with an independent traffic project manager, reviewed engineering designs, looked at traffic studies, looked at signage implementations around the county, um, and looked at the township budgets. At the last uh, Board of Supervisors meeting, the unexpected revelation was made that there's no funding in fiscal year 2023 uh, for the Tara Boulevard RFB, despite the explicit and tacit declarations that the lives of our citizens are number one priority. Um, I believe this lack of funding is hard to rationalize as the safety of all of our citizens, adults and children is clearly still at risk despite the welcome reduction in the speed limit, the additional unlighted and stationary signage that's there. We still have problems there and they're not gonna disappear magically. I consider myself a pragmatic optimist meaning that I believe that uh, if there's a goal that has priority, there should be no systemic reason why it can't be solved. And I think this one can be solved. After studying the spending and committed funds from and for our traffic engineers, that's RVE, up to the end of June, I noted that they spent $8,300 of a $250,000 budget which means they spent only 3.3% of their budget after 48.8% of the year. Uh, I worked over three decades in the engineering project world, and these types of spending and schedule variances would provide immediate and defensible justifications to management to reallocate the budget to other priority projects that need and can spend the funding. Um, now, the Newtown Board of Supervisors might want to ask the traffic engineers a couple of questions. Number one, why was spending so low for the Sycamore Street um, project? And number two, if that money was reallocated, would the budget be spent in a timely manner, manner uh, for example, by the end of this fiscal year? Um, after multiple visits to other Bucks County sites that have these RRFBs, the rectangular flashing beacons, uh, made by a bunch of the people that are out here. Um, 
many of the Newtown residents now believe that vertical side road RRFBs on each side of the road, each facing both directions, would probably be the best design. Um, although this is not the only opinion, there are people that have other opinions. I believe this implementation simultaneously meets the goals of minimizing the probability of a fatal or uh, serious accident and providing a more aesthetically pleasing solution that does not scream out urban congestion. Uh, this is in, as opposed to the you know, over the road type of beacon which has more structure associated with it. So um, kind of in conclusion, we would like to see the supervisors take a vote as soon as possible on reallocating the funding from Sycamore over to Tara or just finding funding somewhere else. I know there were several other line items in the budget that were potentially not going to be spent, such as uh, uh, a new boiler and a, uh, uh, some AV upgrades for this room, I believe. So we graciously thank the supervisors and the traffic engineers for their consideration of our concerns and desires, and we look forward to working with you guys for an effective solution in the future. Thank you, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Hi, I'm uh, Liz Mihalik. I live in Newtown Walk. Uh, my mom's Valerie Mihalik. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to talk about also the crosswalk and how whenever I cross there, um, it, I just feel like unsafe. And yeah. So whenever I cross there or I go into town with my friends during summer or I go back home with my friends from school, I always, when I cross there, I always notice that even though you guys change the speed limit to 25, that a lot of times people are still going 45 or 35, they're still going the speed limit that was there or they're going over that speed limit. So whenever I cross there, I always have to make sure that people are slowing down and half the time I'll cross and people aren't slowing down. So I have to stop in that like thing that you guys made. And it also doesn't feel safe there because you always feel like, oh, someone could like swerve into that or yeah. So I'm just wondering, is there any way that you guys can maybe try to get um, the, uh, is there any way that you can get this to come faster to just make the crosswalk safer, like the thing that you push and then it, like flashing lights and people just automatically have to stop because they notice that pedestrians are crossing because I just don't feel safe whenever I cross there. Okay, thank you. In fact, um, maybe I'll ask the township manager to, uh, I, I seeing that there's a lot of folks from Newtown Walk here and uh, I was going to have this discussion at the end of the meeting, but you, know, you may not want to stay for the whole meeting this evening. So, uh, Mr. Manager, would you care to comment on, on the, the process? Sure. The current status of the project, <clears throat> as I conveyed to most of you in writing, right now it is in a design phase. And this was brought to our attention after, at the same meeting that the Board of Supervisors adopted the 2023 budget. The reason it wasn't included in the budget is because we did not have this, the specifications that we needed to be able to allocate the funds. At this time, our engineer is going through the design phase and is talking to PennDOT about this signal being permitted. This, this, that we can't just put the signal up. It needs to be permitted by PennDOT and then the bid specs need to be per, per, uh, gathered and put out to public bid. In a few months, we're going to be starting the process of the 2024 budget. If, if there's funds available, and I expect that there will be, we will be allocating funds toward the signal in the 2024 budget. And that's likely when we'll find out if we got grant funding to, to help fund for the construction or if we need to go out for more. So we don't have a scope right now to allocate money. Regardless, it's not going to drive the project. The project's being driven by the approvals by PennDOT. That's basically where we're at. Thank you. Mr. Manager, can I ask a question? You mentioned that the uh, specifications are being put together, but I think uh, the ground has shifted as to maybe what the residents think is a better solution than what the engineers have proposed, I think, and that we, I think, told the engineers to get specifications for was the overhead that's correct. Which is significant yes, amount of money. We did. we did. Versus what I think Mark uh, uh, just said about the poles on both sides, which are significantly I, again, this less is, money. Is that correct, Mark? 
again, this comes down to what PennDOT is going to approve there. So PennDOT, if, so right now you're not working on any design specifications for the roadside poles. You're only working on the overhead specifications. We could get our engineer to, since he's the one who's writing the design. Yeah, so the design that is in process right now is for an overhead rapid flashing beacon, which is what was previously discussed. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, we are going to work with PennDOT and design what's required and the best solution for that intersection. Does PennDOT need to approve these freestanding poles as well? Anything that's flashing, PennDOT has to approve. <laughs> if I flashed over there, they would have well, to Well, you know, it. I... We won't get into that, but any flashing traffic signal, PennDOT has to approve. Okay. And that ch changing the design may take some time, some additional time. It could. We can look into making that adjustment. Um, I'm not the traffic engineer. I can talk with our team, and, okay. and we can go over that. Yep. Right. And PennDOT may have, a, have their own thoughts about the design as well. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, I see another public comment. No, you, please. Please, turn your mic. There's a little button. Yeah. Good evening, Valerie Mihalik, uh, Newtown Walk community. Um, again, we appreciate all that you've been doing. I know uh, we've been asking for a lot of your time, but as you can hear from what my daughter was saying, um, the the situation has not changed, even though the speed limit reduction, which we appreciate the township doing, at times seems to make it better, but for the most part it does not. Um, I recently sent an email to the Board of Supervisors. Um, a couple of us drove throughout the county looking at various RRFBs. And it is my understanding that if you do the freestanding ones as opposed to the massed arm, that those are more um, less costly. That's why we were uh, proposing that. So I have two questions. Number one, has the township, before they submit the design to PennDOT, gone to our intersection, gone to the courthouse in Doylestown, where I sent the picture where they have the two freestanding ones? Doylestown has the same issue of line of sight with the hill, same issue with pedestrians crossing from the courthouse. Um, that street is a very busy street where that location is. If you go to the one in Lower Makefield, um, they have a ballpark there, so they have the mast arm because you have more pedestrians crossing at one time. If you go to the one at um, the Newtown um, George School, they need the mast arm there as well because of the all the different lanes merging um, together between 332 and um, what's coming off of, I believe it's Yardley Newtown Road there. So in those situations, you need all of that, which I'm sure is a lot more costly than what we are proposing, which is the two freestanding ones. So we're actually trying to show that we're willing to um, negotiate and um, be more flexible for something like this. To me, when you look at the Doylestown one, it doesn't look like it would be that difficult to um, install. I was part of a project uh, when we lived in Florida to get a traffic light installed, and I understand the whole process of the mast arm and the steel and all of that's very involved. I'm not negating when you have to put two freestanding ones what you need for electric. So, I, you know, we would appreciate if you would look at that. I think it would be um, more cost effective, and I think it would work in this situation. Secondly, my, my question is to the township manager. Um, Yeah, so my question, I just wanted your attention, that's all. Um, what we would like to understand, it's very concerning and very frustrating when you're sitting there saying, and I'm trying not to be disrespectful in any way, I'm trying to understand, we're trying to understand. You know, you, you, you sit there saying like, oh, well, we're gonna do the 2024 budget. We were all here last September. We had children here, young children here, and our understanding was, and it's not just me saying this, it is our community saying this, that it was our understanding that this project would begin. You're shaking your head, and that's disrespectful. Can I please speak and have your respect? Because this is not just me talking, and I've said this multiple times when we're here. 
it was all of our understanding, even the newspaper reported this, that this project would begin in 2023. And then it comes to our attention at the last meeting, which was a complete shock, that there is no money allocated. Mark just presented a very thorough examination that there is money there. There is, this year, that can be reallocated. I would suggest, Mark, that you submit to the supervisors your notes, your information, and all of the research that you have done to show the community that there is money there. So it's very, um, I don't even know what to say. Because to say that now you're going to hopefully have the money for 2024, so you're saying to my daughter and this other son, Jackson, that's here, and the children that use this crosswalk, that now we may have to wait till the end of 2024? That's and what I want, I'm I want not, clarity so on. So let me back up. Okay. The project did start this year. The engineers are working on this project currently. <clears throat> if PennDOT decides to approve this project in before 2024 starts, yes. the Board of Supervisors can reallocate money based on a resolution that needs to be approved at a public meeting. <clears throat> if that's not the case, if this takes longer, then we will allocate the money in 2024 for the construction. That, that's where it, the project is. I do not, I do, me personally, I do not control where the money goes in the budget year to, in, during, in the mid-year. That's the Board of Supervisors. Is there anything we can do to expedite this? There's, we are expediting it. It's, it's, in, it's in our engineers' hands to do the design. It's in PennDOT's hands to review and approve the project then we have to go to bid. It's not like we can pull one of these out of the garage back you know, that, that's, it up. I, I, completely, I completely understand that you're not pulling something out of something. I think we all understand that. And honestly, um, it's almost insulting what you're saying with all that we've done. We understand if may, that. If I may maintain some order. Yes, there's public comment, and we, we don't want to get back and forth too much. <clears throat> Doing that early part of, the, of this year, later part of last year, we did implement what we could immediately in a very quick fashion, the, the signage, the, the, um, the, the refuge area, mm -hmm. the striping on the street. Those are things that we could do without PennDOT approval. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that we would have gotten here any faster if we would have, I mean, we did the speed limit. If I, I don't know how, how we're going to get here any, any, any more quickly than we, than we have already. But what, what can we do? We can, you can keep coming to meetings, and, and we'll keep working with you, and we'll keep updating you on where things are. Uh, I mean, this is, this, this, I've heard it, I heard the, the design change for the vertical, our, our RFBs, I heard that maybe a month or so ago, but this is the first time I'm really, and, and your email mm -hmm. was the first time I'm really hearing your group say that you want a change in, in design. So my, my thought is, isn't that going to slow the process down? Well, with all due respect, we were not a part of the design process. So and what the we were trying the design process is still ongoing. Right, which is wonderful. And, and again, I appreciate what, you know, what you're all doing. But if you could just understand, it's just, you know, we're just trying to keep someone from not being um, hurt there. Mr. So, Howick, may, may I say something? I know in the beginning, uh, you guys mentioned the line of sight problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the board and the engineers thought the overhead mm -hmm. would be the best solution. And I believe that's what design process you're talking about. Can you tell us where exactly you are in that design process and when you might be able to finish that process to submit it to PennDOT for approval? So right now, we, you have to prepare traffic signal plans basically to submit to PennDOT. We're in that process. We've done field survey and we're in the process of preparing those physical plans to submit to PennDOT. So hopefully in the next month it will get to PennDOT for their review. I know the township had expressed interest in wanting to see the draft plan. We'll provide that prior to us going to PennDOT. So when you have the draft plan mm -hmm. and you're saying you're going to provide it to the township, that would be at a public meeting where 
yes. the residents can see what that plan is and understand it? We would provide it to the township to, to share with whoever would like, yep. Well, I would suggest that the township make that plan available to the residents. Now, I know you might have changed your mind about overhead versus freestanding poles because you're trying to save the township money. Yes. And uh, I don't know if changing it would slow the process down even further than what it is. Um, so I, I don't know how to advise on that. Right. And That's I would my point. just suggest that the, the engineer finish the evaluation of the current plan of the overhead, get it submitted to PennDOT, and then we can go to PennDOT and say, you know, let's hurry up and you review this. And mm -hmm. so we can ex maybe expedite it. Okay. So I got a, a, a quick question for yeah. Leanna. Leanna, can both of these, the overhead and the sides, side ones, I don't know exactly what they're called, but I, they're on the sides, correct? Mm -hmm. could, could these plans be worked on simultaneously? So this way, if, if need be, we shift one to the other and we're not losing any time? If, if that's possible, could that be done? I think something that we could do instead of sort of Focusing. doing an effort on, on two sets of plans, we had previously discussed with PennDOT the idea of the overhead. We could have another conversation with them about another type of option, option um, one, and option sort of two. start yeah. that earlier rather than later, rather than prepare two sets. That might make sense. So that's something that we could we could look at now, and then we know yes. how to best proceed from them. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? My uh, yeah. Good evening. I'm uh, Charles Foyer. Uh, Newtown Walk, and pursuant to this, thanks everyone for all of your efforts. Uh, pursuant to it, at the last meeting, and with regard to the funding, um, Leanna was telling us that she was about to submit for ARLE grant funds, mm -hmm. uh, and that hasn't come up. Um, the reallocation of funds is an important element. Um, if the timeline for PennDOT is approval for and equipment can be got, but no one mentioned anything about the ARL grant, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Leanna, at the last meeting you were, it was going to be submitted by June 30th, and I thought the timeline you gave us was they review it and we should hear back and a grant even be given um, two months or so after June 30th. I, I, rec I know yes. you're asking Leanna, but um, I can comment. Yeah, okay. so it's. Um, I think because Leanna yeah. gave us the timeline for the yeah. grant. Yep. Yeah. So the grant was due on June 30th. We submitted prior to that. Generally, the PennDOT gives the timeline, and it's by the end of the year they hope to announce awards of the funding. That's what I heard. Uh, the, before, mm -hmm. hopefully, before the end of the year. Correct. Yep. And as soon as it's available, we'll use it. And the only other question I had was, uh, with regard to the design, what is the expected timeline from Pen for PennDOT reviewing the design to approving it when it could be acted upon? If funds were reallocated, if the ARLE grant came before the end of the year? PennDOT generally takes a few months to, to look at the plans. Could be 60 days for them. Yep. You know, sometimes PennDOT likes to work with residents. I remember in the Wayfield, Mayfield development, I mean, there was a court case, but PennDOT held a public hearing and invited uh, residents into that hearing, approving to prove certain changes to the roadway over there. I mean, I don't know if PennDOT has a public meeting uh, possibility that could be something uh, to influence them and uh, get them moving a little bit faster. It might be something to look into after we submit the plans to them. Yes, well, I think you can hear from the, the concern that uh, the citizens have, and not just Newtown Walk citizens. I think there are others that use the crosswalk and have expressed their concern as well, and the fact that people are not obeying the speed limits. Um, that 
this group, I think I can say, would be willing to work with PennDOT based upon the diligence that we've already demonstrated to this. So I would ask, how do we get um, that connection with PennDOT? How do we pursue this? Because we're, uh, also, looking, we're yeah. also looking at the two different options, the boom over the road versus, and if we could get PennDOT's feedback on what they may believe is appropriate and if one of the options isn't, I mean, it'll speed things along. Well, I, I can't make any promises, but um, I know the name and the contact information for the PennDOT representative that I was talking about that held these public meetings. And they were very informative and very um, helpful, I think. Can, Although they up. didn't agree with us <laughs> about, you know, what we wanted to do over there. So anyway. Sure. Well, given precedence of Doylestown, Courthouse, Busy Road, um, you know, we're willing to help. That's the point I think I'm trying to make. And uh, so thanks. I'll look for an email with that contact. Or Valerie or me well, or the group. Uh, well, I wouldn't get ahead of ourselves because the uh, let the engineers contact PennDOT first, make sure PennDOT has all the information and is getting ready to review it before we start, you know, getting pen talking to PennDOT. Uh, That'd you know. be great. Leanna, do you have a sense of when PennDOT might be reviewing the plan? Do you mind asking? Do you want me to answer? Please. PennDOT does not have the plans yet. So the way that we're going to go about this, based on tonight, is that we are going to reach out to them with the idea of a different type of mounting. Then we can go from there, I think. Um, so again, depending on what feedback we get from them, whether it's the overhead, which they had previously, you know, we had discussed that with them. If they're okay with the post-mounted sign, we would then proceed with that and then eventually submit to PennDOT. Um, and then we can go over timeline with them once they have the plan. But generally, they take a month or two to review plans once they have them. Can I just say we feel your urgency? We, we absolutely do. We want it to come about as much as you do. Uh, I live there, so I know the problem. And we will do everything in our power, uh, if it's not already being done, to make sure that we get an outcome that everybody is happy with in the quickest amount of time we can. I, that we can promise. Ditto. Thanks Ditto very much. For me. Thank you. Any others before we move on? Hi, Randy Edgington, also a Newtown Walk resident. At the last meeting that we were all attending here, and relative to the urgency of this matter, you gave conditional approval to a couple of restaurants to uh, continue the process to enter Newtown, Capitol Grill, and Blue Point Grill, uh, which is great, you know. But what that's going to do is increase the traffic flow coming off the bypass from all the people who now don't have to go to Capitol Grill and the surrounding areas and the Blue Point Grill in Princeton, now it's closer here. So the traffic pattern is going to increase coming through, off the bypass down Washington Road. So I would just ask that that be also taken into consideration with respect to the urgency of this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Let's move on to reports of committees, boards, and commissions. And I see Peg Driscoll is in the house. Hi, good evening. Peggy Driscoll, Chair of the Planning Commission, here to give you a report on our June 20th meeting. Uh, the only item we had on our agenda was KRE Upper Kajongi Associates uh, on Lower Silver Lake Road. Uh, attorneys Ed Murphy and Joe Blackburn and city planner Tom Comitta were in attendance to discuss the zoning hearing board challenge to our ordinance. They explained that our current ordinance does not contain a multifamily mid-rise apartment use at all, a use that has been removed from the JMZO in 2005. 
Mr. Murphy explained that their goal is to work in a collaborative effort to craft a cure for the lack of what has been the B11 mid-rise apartment use. The Township Special Counsel, Joe Bagley, reviewed for the Planning Commission the Township's position that the Township and the Jointure have adequately provided for a variety of housing options, including rental apartments, such as garden apartments. Our members asked a few questions, but our own solicitor advised that any specific questions regarding such issues as traffic impact would not be part of the application before the Commission that evening. Some members did express concern about the eventual impact if KRE were successful in its challenge and their property on Lower Silver Lake Road were to be developed as mid-rise apartments. Again, our solicitor and our own planner, as well as special counsel, all advise that specific questions about the project would be addressed at land development if and when the challenge were successful. And that was all we had. Any questions for Planning Commission? Chairperson? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. That brings us to reports of board members. Uh, first of all, I hope, I hope everyone's enjoying the summer. The nice warm weather. Uh, a couple of things that, that I have to report on. Um, I met with some folks from both the NFA, which is the Newtown Fire Association, and the Newtown Emergency Services Department um, to ex begin exploring ways to bridge the gap from where we are with volunteer and, and paid staff firefighters to 24-7 uh, paid staff, uh, both both, we, we're, we're all acknowledging the fact that it's more difficult, more and more difficult to get volunteers. And volunteer firemen with all their, all their training that's necessary and all the time, uh, the commitment from family, uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult to get, it's becoming more and more difficult to get volunteers. They, they still do, but they also get resignations. So, um, just to let you know that that's, um, that's something that we'll be exploring uh, with our fire chief uh, in future, future weeks and months. Uh, AV upgrades were mentioned. Uh, we did have a meeting, a work session prior to this meeting this evening uh, to look at uh, what AV upgrades we could um, uh, suggest for this room, including State-of-the-art um, equipment, uh, which would be HD monitors, HD cables. Uh, it would just be bringing everything up into the digital age. Some of this, some of this uh, equipment's 20 and 30 years old. So, um, new cameras. New, these cameras came from the building uh, up the hill or down the hill, whichever way that is. Uh, lastly, I uh, attended uh, the, f the first half of a phone call. I had some family obligations over the weekend, um, but I attended a, f a phone call, a Zoom session with the zoning, the Joint Zoning Council, that's Wrightstown, Upper Makefield, and, and Newtown. Um, and that was to look at distributed antenna systems, which is also known as 5G. Uh, we commissioned a uh, law firm, Cohen and Cohen, the Cohen Law Group out of Pittsburgh, to give us some direction on how to draft an, an ordinance that would uh, begin at, at least address ways that um, we can make sure that this is done with the health and welfare of the um, of our residents in mind. Uh, we, we have to be able to uh, let it in. It's a federal guideline, but we are allowed to make uh, regulations. Um, I don't know if um, Ms. Snyder and Ms. Mr. Mack were also at that meeting. Maybe they could wanted to add something else. I just wanted to summarize that that, that was actually happening as well about 5G. So that's all the comments I have, Mr. Mack. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, I was at that meeting via Zoom as well, and uh, as you brought up the health uh, concerns uh, several months ago, we did have uh, residents and other citizens attend this meeting and uh, talk about the health issues related to 5G. And so uh, we did discuss that at the JZC meeting, and I could just read what the if I may, a, a, a little paragraph from um, the chair of the JCC about what was discussed regarding health issues. Uh, he says, the federal regulations prohibit municipalities from setting standards for RF of wireless facilities. The ordinance re references other regulatory bodies and standards that must be met. The FCC sets specific RF standards. The municipality can require that applicants certify that the facilities will meet uh, these standards, and the municipality can request that the provider uh, provide certification that it still meets the federal standards uh, during the course of operation. The municipality can also do independent testing to de determine if the standards were actually being, uh, were being exceeded. I recall one of the experts we talked to said sometimes these providers give you a standard that's for workers working on 5G rather than ordinary citizens. And the standards for workers are much higher levels of radiation because they're not exposed to it for that long a time as residents would be. So uh, we can do this. The ordinance that we're writing, we'll have uh, our ability to independently test for that. And if the standards are exceeded, the municipality can declare facility, the facility to be a threat to health and safety. The operator would then be directed to regain compliance or face the rev revocation of their permit. That's what the, um, the ordinance is. It gives them, uh, they have to apply for permits to install these along the rights of way. Uh, in some cases, they don't need permits, for example, I know at the Newtown water uh, tank near where I live, there are already 5G uh, antennas on there, and uh, that's because it's private property, and the Newtown water uh, uh, authority doesn't need to have permits. Any private property uh, does not need to get permits from uh, the township to install 5G. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mack. Ms. Snyder? I also attended that meeting. I think pretty much it's been said what it was about. Uh, the Environmental Advisory Council has not met this month. They took a break, so I have nothing else to report. Okay, well, Mr. Calabro? I have nothing to report. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, that brings us to our public hearing, and I'm going to ask Mr. Sander if he'll uh, take the lead here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the board will now open a public hearing on the application of KRE Upper Mukunji Associates LP to the Newtown Township Board of Supervisors for a substantive validity challenge together with curative amendment pursuant to section 916.1 A2 of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. And before I forget, uh, I'm going to mark uh, board exhibits before we um, identify the parties and their counsel. Uh, exhibit B1 uh, will be the application including a May 15th, 2023 cover letter from counsel to the applicant, as well as a proposed curative amendment ordinance, and also uh, three sheets of plans that were submitted with the application. Uh, exhibit B2 uh, is a copy of the proof of publication of notice of this hearing that appeared uh, in the advance of Bucks County on June 25th, 2023, and July 2nd, 2023. Exhibit B3 will be a series of three photographs depicting posting of the property with notice of this evening's hearing as required by the Municipalities Planning Code. 
Exhibit B4 is the Newtown Township Planning Commission synopsis of its June 20th, 2023 meeting at which this application was discussed. And Exhibit B5 is the Bucks County Planning Commission memorandum dated July 5th, 2023, reviewing the amendment as required by the municipality's planning code. <clears throat> Those are the board exhibits for this hearing. Uh, I will note that we have uh, Chairman um, Dennis Fisher, uh, we have Vice Chair John Mack, we have Assistant Secretary and Assistant Treasurer Ellen Snyder, and Member Philip Calabro here this evening. Uh, Member Kyle Davis is absent, however, he will read the transcript of this hearing and uh, will, we assume, uh, be participating in uh, this matter. Um, if you're wondering why um, I am sitting up here with the board and not down there uh, litigating this matter, the municipality's planning code is clear that when a curative amendment uh, is filed and the board is required to hear it, that the township solicitor must sit with and advise the board during the proceeding and provides the township with the option of obtaining outside counsel to represent it, which it has done uh, in this matter. Uh, so at this time, I would ask uh, counsel for the applicant to identify themselves uh, for the record. Uh, good evening, Mr. Sander. My name is Ed Murphy. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Said so. And, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. To my right is my partner, Joe Blackburn, who also represents the applicant. And the microphone is on, but doesn't work. Is that better? Hello? Yeah. Yeah? It, right, when you hold it, like, right there. <laughs> Seriously. Ed Murphy and Joe Blackburn. For the applicant. For the applicant, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bagley. Uh, Joseph Bagley in defense of the ordinance. Okay. At this time, um, uh, in that this is a uh, public hearing and it's being held by the Board of Supervisors pursuant to the municipality's planning code, uh, it's uh, the board's obligation to ask uh, if uh, anybody else beside the applicant and the uh, township uh, wish to become a party to this matter. Uh, you do not need to become a party in order to make public comment and uh, state your opinion of this application to the Board of Supervisors. That will occur after all of the testimony is complete. Uh, however, if you wish to become a party, uh, you will be able to call your own witnesses, cross-examine the party's witnesses, and appeal a decision with which you do not agree. Uh, however, to become a party and qualify as a party, you must be an aggrieved person, which means that you have an immediate and substantial uh, interest in this, uh, in this matter and you are adversely affected by it. Uh, with that said, and keeping in mind that you do not need to become a party in order to address the board during public comment, is there anybody who wishes to become a party to this matter? Seeing none, uh, we will proceed. Um, Mr. Bagley, uh, you have made it known that you had a uh, preliminary uh, motion to submit to the board, uh, re uh, recognizing that it will not be decided this evening, but that the board will take it under advisement and also give uh, Mr. Murphy and Mr. Blackburn the opportunity to respond. Thank you. Uh, I assume this is working? No. Well, if you can tilt it up and talk right into the front of it. But all right, I'll, I'll do an Edward R. Murrow of this. There you go. Um, thank you. Um, what I'm uh, going to make a motion in limine about, a motion in limine is a fancy word for um, a motion to exclude evidence from the case. Uh, in the uh, challenge that was filed by KRE, uh, paragraphs 8 and 9 of the challenge make a quotation of certain uh, statements by Planning Commission members and supervisors. Uh, I think that's under the legislative history in the challenge. 
uh, I'd uh, make a motion to exclude those statements from the record in the case and also to strike them from the challenge, which I believe has now been marked as Exhibit B1. Uh, and the reason for that is that the burden of proof in the case is KREs. They have the burden to show that the ordinance as applied uh, excludes a certain use. In this case, they allege apartments. Uh, this is not based on any statements by any of the supervisors or any of the planning commission members. Uh, this is not an auto accident case. This is a very statutorily mandated procedure. We do not base it on witness statements. Uh, we base it on the ordinance as it's written, on the land that it applies to, and it's also based on certain expert testimony that will probably be brought in later in the hearing. Um, I have a memorandum of law, which I have a copy of for counsel, and I can provide copies, Mr. Sander, for you and the board. By all means, Mr. Bagley, thank you. And what that memo of law is going to state is exactly what I'm stating, and it also, I cite certain case law in there, and that those cases are from substantive validity challenges, which are very similar to what we're doing, and curative amendment challenges. And they say, and I quote the cases, legislative intent in a zoning case is generally irrelevant. And also, the state of mind of the legislative body in enacting a zoning ordinance is irrelevant to a determination of its validity. Uh, it also quotes other language from other cases that essentially says, The rule that members of the legislative body are not subject to inquiry incident to any challenge of its legislation so that they may have absolute freedom to act in a legislative matters for the public welfare, quote, without fear of being called on for vindication or explanation, leaving to the courts the function of determining whether such acts transgress the fundamental law. And in support of what I'm saying, there's also another provision of the second class township code. And that provision, I think I have quoted it as 603 of the second class township code. It says, a member of the board shall not, shall not be disqualified from voting on any issue before the board solely because the member has previously expressed an opinion on the issue in either an official or unofficial capacity. I believe that section of the second class township code further supports the motion to exclude any statements by the Board of Supervisors or the Planning Commission from this record and the motion to strike the statements eight and nine from the challenge. And with that, I'd like to hand up uh, the memorandum of law. I'd also like to say that I think it's fair that uh, counsel for KRE be given an opportunity, an equal opportunity, to prepare their own memorandum of law. Uh, the board agrees, Mr. Bagley. Please hand that up, and thank you for providing a copy to uh, Mr. <coughs> Murphy and Mr. Blackburn. Um, <coughs> noting that the <coughs> applicant's counsel is just seeing this motion uh, for the first time this evening, uh, the board will uh, certainly grant uh, the applicant uh, a, a reasonable amount of time to respond to the motion, and the board will um, discuss the motion before the next hearing and we'll rule on it at that time uh, since it goes to the uh, actual language in the challenge. Um, at this time, I do want to uh, allow the parties, uh, if they wish, to uh, make introductory comments to the board regarding their positions. Uh, if you're prepared to do that, great. If not, we can wait until uh, the next hearing, but um, we did discuss that possibility and I'll turn it over to uh, counsel for the applicant. Uh, thank you, Dave. Um, and while we're talking about scheduling for the benefit of the audience, uh, I believe that um, Council has agreed, subject to the availability of the supervisors, that the next hearing on this matter will not be until Monday evening, September 18th. So for those that are interested in following along, we're still over two months away before uh, the first substantive hearing. And as a result of that delay, 
in advance with Mr. Bagley and Mr. Sanders' acknowledgement, it was agreed among all of us that tonight would be limited to preliminary matters such as Mr. Bagley just raised, we have one as well, and that other than opening statements and determining if other parties were interested in participating, that would be the extent of what we'd be doing tonight because the board only wanted to allow us no more than an hour to do those things tonight. So we would expect that the September 18th night, which is the typical monthly board work session evening, we would have substantially more time to present the application on the merits and introduce testimony and other matters such as that. So I just wanted to clear up because Mr. Bagley and Joe and I talked about it before the meeting. We are assuming that is the correct next evening is September 18th, right? The board will be entertaining a motion after introductory comments to continue the hearing to Monday, September 18th. Okay. I would like to make some introductory remarks, and I know Joe does too, and I make them recognizing that, as Ms. Driscoll mentioned, we did appear last month before the Planning Commission to introduce this matter to them, and I know that multiple members of the Board of Supervisors were present for that conversation. But for those that weren't, I'd like to at least summarize in an opening statement the thrust of the application, which, as Mr. Sander indicated, is procedurally different than what most of us would typically be considering as part of a more typical subdivision or land development that all of us on our side and your side would normally entertain. This is a somewhat unique procedure authorized in the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code that, as Mr. Bagley correctly referred to it, as a substantive validity challenge with an accompanying curative amendment. That has its own rules and regulations that impact you folks as a board and us as the applicant. And in our case, what our application essentially involves is a review of your ordinances that existed when the jointure was first established in 1984 and as it exists today as it relates to whether or not the jointure allows for market rate apartments. I think everybody is aware that in 1984, four municipalities in the region, Newtown Township, Wrightstown Township, Upper Makefield Township, and Newtown Borough, collaborated and enacted what at the time, 40 years ago, was an unusual jointure ordinance, the Newtown Area Joint Municipal Zoning Ordinance. There were very few municipalities that got together 40 years ago to consider something such as a joint municipal ordinance, but that was the thrust of the collective view of those four municipalities then. In that jointure ordinance in 1984, there was a use permitted known as a B11 use. It was titled a mid-rise apartment use. That mid-rise apartment use contemplated, as you might expect, apartments that would be no shorter, if you will, than three stories, no taller than six stories, and no fewer than 16 units. That use remained in the zoning ordinance, in the jointure, from 1984 until April of 2005, 21 years later. And it was never, even when it was adopted or created in 84, and until it was eliminated in 2005, it was never a standalone use. It always, even then, had to be part of a performance subdivision in an R2 medium density district. In any event, in April of 2005, the jointure, by ordinance, elected to eliminate that B11 use from the jointure. And in the intervening year since 2005, that B11 use has ceased to exist. What does exist in the jointure ordinance is, and Mr. Bagley referred to it during our planning commission discussion on June 20th, and 
he will continue to refer to it moving forward, is there is a B-10 use, a garden apartment use. And again, much like the B-11 use, that use is not a standalone use. That use is permitted in the uh, CR2, R1, and R2 districts as part of the performance subdivision, and it's also permitted as a mixed use uh, in the TC, Town Commercial District. But again, not a independent, freestanding, standalone use. Uh, our view is that uh, because of earlier appellate decisions in the Commonwealth, that each municipality has an obligation to provide for uh, market rate apartments, not as part of some other performance subdivision, mixed use, but you need to provide that use for the benefit of your residents and future residents that may wish to come to those municipalities that are part of the jointure. I should mention that everybody now knows that Newtown Borough no longer is part of the jointure. It's now the jointure consists of Upper Makefield, Wrightstown, and uh, Newtown Townships. Uh, in terms of the procedure here, uh, I think we need, and we all spoke about this on June 20th, uh, the focus of the application that we've submitted is very limited. It's limited to whether or not your ordinance is constitutionally valid because of the framework that it does or doesn't allow apartments, which we're going to get into. Even though we submitted a plan, as Mr. Sander mentioned, as part of your, the exhibit package, um, the focus of this application is not on the plan. It's not on how wide the streets are, how many trees are going to be planted, what type of amenities would be allowed, what the density is. Those types of issues, as Ms. Driscoll's summary of the Planning Commission discussion referenced, those types of, quote, land development issues would be handled at a subsequent point of time if, we, if and when we reach the point of that hearing. Um, so I think it's important that we all remember that what we're doing here is very targeted and limited because of that's the procedure in the municipality's planning code that governs it. Uh, Mr. Sander appropriately made mention of the fact um, that his role is different under uh, the uh, substantive validity challenge provisions in the ordinance. Um, and because he is an advisor to this body, uh, the body has hired special counsel and the person of Mr. Bagley to represent and defend the ordinance, as Mr. Bagley referenced. That's not the only difference. Your role as a board is different. Uh, Typically, in the more traditional subdivision and land development sense that we all participate in week to week, you guys sit as, uh, in effect, a legislative body. You get to make decisions like that. In the substantive validity challenge framework established by the MPC, you sit as a quasi-judicial body. It's different. And for that reason, because it's different, there are different rules uh, we think that would apply to uh, the participation, conduct, and comments of board members. And uh, it is a little bit different uh, than what Mr. Bagley presented tonight about paragraphs 8 and 9, and we will deal with that issue separately. But Joe did raise a related issue that Joe Blackburn is going to deal with now that deals with uh, the different position that board members have to find themselves in because you are effectively the first level of collectively folks in the black robe as opposed to your normal role as legislators. So uh, I'll let Joe reach out or I'll let Joe comment on those couple of issues that we want to deal with preliminarily uh, before we close or, or let then Joe Bagley speak if he wishes but uh, Joe Blackburn wants to address an issue that deals with participation going forward. Yeah, thank you. Um, as Ed said, uh, tonight's proceeding, you are sitting in your quasi-judicial capacity. Uh, the reason that we are um, circling the drain on that is a significant one. Um, in a quasi-judicial or any judicial capacity, the uh, applicant, petitioner, what have you, is entitled to due process. 
doesn't matter if it's before this Board of Supervisors, before the Common Pleas Court or the Supreme Court of the United States. Due process is attended any quasi-judicial hearing. Um, now, due process, there are, there are you know, um, courses in law school that deal with do what, all the things that are involved in due process. Uh, I won't bore you with that. Um, but for the purpose of tonight's um, consideration and the motion that, that we're about to make, due process involves two very distinct things. It involves uh, or two very distinct rights and obligations. Um, first, it guarantees to the, in this case, the applicant, the right to um, a hearing uh, by an impartial body, free of even the appearance of any bias, prejudice, capricious disbelief, or prejudgment. It also obligates you, as the judicial body in this instance, uh, to adjudicate the matter before you fairly and faithfully applying the law as it has been presented to you. Um, when even the appearance of the lack of a of due process exists, it would be appropriate for the judicial, the, the judiciary, or in this case, the member, individual members of the board, to recuse themselves from consideration of that application. Uh, and that is what we will be seeking tonight uh, with respect to Mr. Mack. Um, Mr. Mack has demonstrated um, and continues to demonstrate, and um, we will um, provide documentation to that effect, uh, continue to demonstrate um, that bias, prejudice, capricious disbelief, and prejudgment, and also uh, overtly stated um, at your very last meeting, in fact, uh, that he is, has no intention of applying the law um, and in fact did not apply the law as was presented to, uh, by, to him by Mr. Sander. Um, have a packet, we would, I guess, A1 collectively. Well, um, is, it, is it a motion you're making to disqualify Mr. Mack yes. from considering the matter? It is a motion with the corresponding... We're not going to mark that as, as, a, as a document. That's legal, uh, legal argument. And um, as Mr. Bagley did with handing up his memorandum of law, you can certainly hand that up, uh, provide a copy to Mr. Bagley, which you just did. And um, again, I think um, as Mr. Uh, Bagley has done in your case uh, with regard to his motion, uh, we will certainly give Mr. Bagley an opportunity to respond <coughs> to uh, <coughs> this matter. Uh, we'll, we will treat it as a motion to disqualify Mr. Mack <clears throat> and, excuse me, and uh, we will give Mr. Bagley an opportunity to respond and we will uh, act on this motion uh, prior to the September 18th meeting as well, or, or at the September mm -hmm. 18th meeting prior to beginning testimony. I think two comments. Um, I'd like to go through the, uh, I think the, the, the law requires the petition to set forth the grounds and instead of the documents speaking for themselves. I'd like to run through them very quickly. But number two, um, I'm not sure that Mr. Bagley's, I, I don't mean this pejoratively, opinion on this matter um, is really relevant. And Mr. Bagley is here in defense of the ordinance, not in defense of Mr. Mack. Um, with respect, I think that is your uh, call, if you will, Dave, or, or uh, position to take a position and advise Mr. Mack as opposed to Mr. Bagley, who's here simply for the ordinance. Well, we're going to allow the board to decide the motion. Certainly. And I need to discuss it with the board. And uh, to the extent that there are two sides to uh, every motion, uh, mm -hmm. we will allow Mr. Bagley to respond. Certainly. <clears throat> um, very briefly, um, and I know we'll, we, we haven't marked it, um, you have before you a packet of materials, the, the substance of which are set forth on the face of those materials. They contain um, various <laughs> excerpts from various social media um, platforms, if you will, uh, upon which Mr. Mack has participated over the past weeks and months, specifically with respect to this application. Um, just briefly running through them, the first of which is an excerpt from a Facebook page that Mr. Mack has uh, founded, as you'll see. Uh, the Facebook page is a group by John Mack, Newtown Supervisor, uh, entitled Not On My Bypass. The stated purpose of that group is um, You've heard of NIMBY, which stands for Not In My Backyard. This group can be called NAMBI, Not On My Bypass. We're talking about the Newtown Bypass, AKA Route 332, 
There has been long opposition to the development on the bypass, which was intended to be a, quote, greenway when it was first built. Members of this group discuss ways of preventing overdevelopment on the New Pound Bypass. Subsequent page is a June 14th post to that Facebook group by Mr. Mack, uh, in which you'll see the pervasive theme of zoning Armageddon, um, which is his um, turn of phrase to refer to a variety of matters going on on the bypass, um, but obviously including our instant application and posting about it on uh, his Facebook group, not on my bypass. Second is a similar post uh, with the face shot from uh, my esteemed colleague here, Mr. Murphy. Uh, you probably haven't seen that, but uh, he doesn't go on Facebook much. But um, uh, again, commenting about the application on his Facebook group, not on my bypass. Um, second exhibit is a blog post from Mr. Mack's blog entitled John Mack, Your Newtown Voice, uh, dated uh, May 18th, 2023. Uh, in which, again, he uh, comments upon the application. Um, specifically, uh, on page two, Mr. Mack categorically, quote, opposes changes to zoning dictated by developers and then calls the applicant uh, disgraceful. Um, third post is uh, another, or excuse me, third article is another post from Mr. Mack's blog, uh, John Mack, Your Newtown Voice, dated June 22nd, 2023. This is a post made after the aforementioned appearance before the Planning Commission, uh, which I would note Mr. Mack attended and made public comment at uh, in opposition of the application. Um, that post goes on to again reference the application in the context of validity challenge will result in Newtown zoning Armageddon and goes on to characterize uh, the applicant, or excuse me, uh, I'll just read it, um, that this application, quote, promises to be the final and conclusive battle between the forces of good, parens, Newtown, and evil, the developer. Um, fourth is uh, the June 2023 copy of Mr. Mack's newsletter, uh, June edition, Newtown News Updates. Uh, these seven pages are dedicated entirely to Newtown Zoning Armageddon. And I won't go through all of it, but um, repeatedly referring to the applicant and the application as the application, excuse me, as an epic series of battles between developers and townships calls this application a call to arms and uh, accuses the applicant of, quote, weaponizing the zoning ordinance uh, and then continues to refer to the application as a battle throughout and questions whether they can win the battle. Um, and lastly is an excerpt um, you heard me mention from your last planning, or excuse me, your last meeting, uh, June 14th. Um, you're all well aware that at that meeting, one of the topics of conversation uh, was the settlement agreement for the Provco Wawa um, se settlement agreement. Um, that is, as Mr. Mack phrases it, uh, the opening salvo of Newtown zoning Armageddon with our application being uh, the second battle. Um, in the context of zoning Armageddon, Mr. Mack made comments that explicitly stated his intention and in fact that he had ignored the direction of Mr. Sander with respect to legal matters in the context of the consideration of the Wawa settlement agreement. Um, we feel that that clearly demonstrates uh, his inability or unwillingness rather to again adhere to the law as stated. So we've got um, actively seeking to, quote, prevent development on the bypass, categorically, quote, opposing changes to zoning dictated by developers, categorizing the applicant as evil and, quote, evil and, quote, disgraceful, uh, characterizing this application as a battle and a call to arms, and openly flaunting his um, willful and intentional refusal to follow the clear legal directive provided by Mr. Sander uh, in the context of, quote, zoning Armageddon. So for those reasons, uh, we would seek Mr. Mack um, to recuse himself. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Blackburn. Yep. Um, Mr. Bagley, I, I certainly don't expect you <coughs> to, to respond at this point. <coughs> Mr. Blackburn and Mr. Murphy, have you concluded your introductory comments? Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Bagley, your introductory comments, and it could certainly include uh, anything you wish to comment on or regarding this motion. 
All right, I just want to make it clear that that's what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the comments that have been made. This is not my opening argument. Um, I would like to defer that until our case in chief, the defense, defense case in chief. Um, so I'm not going to give an outline of everything that I would be doing. Um, I just say this in response to Mr. Blackburn's motion. Number one, I'm really glad I quoted the second class township code because that answers most of this question, I think. A member of the board should not be disqualified from voting on any issue before the board solely because the member has previously expressed an opinion on the issue in either an official or unofficial capacity. Another thing I'd like to say is I've seen this before. I've seen this from a challenger in a curative amendment case where they try to get the, uh, one of the board members recused. I have even seen the challenger file a motion with the Court of Common Pleas and the Court of Common Pleas has refused to get involved in the issue because it's one that is solely within the um, jurisdiction, if you will, of the Board of Supervisors right now. And it is correct that Mr. Sander will be the one who advises you on this motion and this issue. But I'd also like to say, in response to what Mr. Blackburn said, it is not extraordinary that you are sitting as a quasi-judicial body. It's legislated that way. You hold many hats, as you know. You sometimes act as administrators, you are sometimes acting as legislators, and in this instance, you're acting as a quasi-judicial body. I see on your agenda that there's a conditional use decision before you about Capitol Grill and another one about Blue Point Grill. When you sit making those decisions, you similarly sit as a quasi-judicial body. There is nothing extraordinary in that sense with this action or this curative amendment challenge other than the fact that many people do not file them routinely like conditional use decisions and i guess the last thing i'd say is you might think that this is just something that's within the board and this hearing and that's all that it really matters that it that does it impact this board of supervisors or not but what's really going on here is if you noticed in my opening remarks what I said was, I moved to strike from the challenge the language that they were trying to put in, quoting certain supervisors and planning commission members. Um, I'd also like to say now, I'm objecting to the exhibits that are being offered by KRE, and I'm moving to strike all the quotations from those materials that Mr. Blackburn said that he put into the record. Because what's happening here is they're trying to make a record not just before you, but if this goes to court, they want to be able to quote those statements back to a court. And that's what's happening here. That's why it's in the form of exhibits, and that's why it was in the challenge. And because I raised the motion and said it's irrelevant, it should not be in this record, and it should not be going up to any higher court if this goes up to a higher court. And that's what's really, that's the dynamics of what's going on here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bagley. Um, I would say 30 days for the parties to respond to the cross motions uh, is appropriate. And um, at this point, uh, if there are no other introductory matters, uh, it would be appropriate for the board to consider a motion to continue this hearing to Monday, September 18th, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, at the Newtown Township building. So moved. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any questions from the board? Uh, I have a question. That's a work session meeting, which is not usually uh, broadcast live on YouTube. Will we be able to uh, have this meeting recorded as we're doing with this meeting on September 18th? That was, that was my question as well. And I believe yes, that's clear. OK, we'll thank a public, you. public meeting with video. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Any from the public? <clears throat> Please limit. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No. 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 Yeah. We're, we're not going to. Uh, we're not okay. going to ask for public comment on a motion to continue. We're going to ask the board to vote at this time. 
there will be time for public comment on this entire hearing after the testimony is complete. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Certainly. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you, board members. Okay. Brings us to our engineer's report. Thank you. Uh, the item we have tonight is for the Lower Dollington Road Multi-Use Trail Payment Certificate Number 4. Uh, based on the work that's been completed so far, um, we recommend payment to associated paving contractors in the amount of $784. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. A motion and a second. Do we have any discussion from the board? Uh, yeah, I guess it would be appropriate for me... Uh, I, I note that we've had, this is the third payment, and they're totaling, it looks like uh, $525,000 or so uh, dollars from the one, two, and adding this third one, I guess. There's a fourth one. A fourth one, I don't know, some, somewhere around that. Mm -hmm. But the total amount for the, um, the project for this uh, company was over $1 million, is that correct? That's correct, yep. So you still have like $500,000 worth of work to, that they have to do, right? It sounds like? It, they still need to, so the applicant, the contractor has another payment request into us for a larger amount for the work that they've completed till now, so you'll likely see that at the next meeting. Oh, okay. They're, they're more than 50% done. Um, but just, you know, the payments have the to catch up to that. more than 50% done. So yep. is there any idea when they might be finished? They should be done in the next few weeks, yep. In By the, the end of July is the plan. And would that be the time for the Lower Darlington Road to be repaid? Because it's not on the schedule, on the, a road paving schedule yet. Yep, so the con we have, uh, the contractor for the road program has started the concrete work, and then they are going to submit to us the actual you know, roadway repaving work, so they're working on that schedule now. So hopefully, you know, once the trail is complete, the paving will happen right away, and hopefully, yep. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. I believe a motion and a second on this uh, payment certificate, number four. Any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the payment of payment certificate number four for the Lower Dorlington Trail, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. All right, that brings us to our solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First item on our report is consideration by the Board of approving a conditional use decision for Capitol Grill. Uh, this was uh, a hearing that was held at your last meeting, our office prepared a decision for your review. Uh, this grants um, a uh, use E5 and use E6 use for Capital Grill uh, in the space uh, that was previously occupied by Pier 1 Imports at 2807 South Eagle Road. It would uh, require a motion to approve the conditional use decision. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clabo. Uh, do we have a second for Capitol Grill? Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any uh, further discussion from the board? I would just say this is approving the written Correct. conditional use. We're not voting. That's already been voted already on. Been voted. The conditional use has been granted. This, just, this is just the written decision. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the written conditional use for the Conditional use decision for the Capitol Grill, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries three to one. Thank you. Next item on our report is uh, similarly uh, a, uh, the board's consideration uh, to approve a conditional use decision for Blue Point Grill. Uh, this uh, is the second conditional use decision for Blue Point Grill. The first uh, ha occurred uh, a while ago, um, probably late about a year ago, late 2022, where permission was given for the restaurant to uh, occupy the space formerly occupied by the Corner Bakery at 3 West Road in Newtown. Uh, this conditional use uh, was in response to Blue Point Grill's request to add 16 additional outdoor tables 
uh, with four seats each for a total of 64 additional outdoor seats. Uh, the board granted that conditional use at its last meeting, and a motion would be appropriate to approve the conditional use decision. Thank you, Mr. Sander. Do we have such a motion? No motion. No motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have uh, any further discussion from the board? If hearing none, any, well, any any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the written conditional use decision for Blue Point Grill, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. And the final item is uh, the board's consideration of three residential zoning hearing board applications to be heard by the zoning hearing board on August 3rd. Um, does the uh, board wish to take a position on any of those three applications? Anyone? Hearing crickets, we will Sorry. assume no position, and that concludes our report. Sounds like all issues that the Zoning Hearing Board can take care of. Thank you. Um, brings us to the manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General fund, is ba general fund balance this evening is $7,432,618. We have Chief Hearn to give his monthly police report. Before that, we have uh, the plan expiration report with no action required. Yep. Evening, Chief. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good board evening. members. June 2023 police report, we documented 1,706 calls for service. We logged just over 20, 22,800 miles on our patrol fleet. We had eight arrests for the month of June, including three assaults, two were domestics, one unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, one receiving stolen property, one retail theft, one fleeing and eluding police officers, and one warrant for a burglary from Falls Township. There were 12 new cases referred to detectives and six crime scenes processed, some of which were an alleged rape, which is still under investigation, theft, a death investigation, criminal mischief, five, five child line issues, and two uh, cyber sexual assaults on children. 66 traffic crashes for the month, 159 traffic citations were issued, and 215 warnings were issued. Our selective enforcement, truck enforcement detail, we had two task force details involving 23 inspections, six citations, 25 warnings, two vehicles were placed out of service, two drivers were placed out of service, and one vehicle was towed. As you've seen in the paper, um, a uh, local contractor was sentenced up to 50 years for state prison for an indecent assault on a new town township boy while doing work at the child's residence. Our lead investigator, Corporal Joe Camp, and Deputy District Attorney Sarah Heimbeck were instrumental in its prosecution. So it very nice job. Public service announcements. Uh, successful events in June. On June 20th, we had our Rita's Water Rice on Swamp Road, which was, was success, successful. And upcoming events is the Grange Fair. August 16th to 20th on Penns Park Road in Wrightstown. Uh, our police department will be represented there as well. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Anyone have questions for the chief? Very good. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, chief. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have two other items under my report Please. for the board's consideration. Please First please. of which is the approval of the Bucks County Consortium fuel bid. Uh, each year we collect, uh, we join the bid for purchase of fuel for diesel fuel and for gasoline from the Bucks County Consortium, which yields typically a lower rate. Um, <clears throat> as such, the appropriate motion would be uh, authorization to approve the Bucks County Consortium fuel bid in accordance with the Public Works Director's memorandum of June 19th. We have a motion. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion from the board? I, I just had a quick question. Is this uh, slightly higher, slightly lower it's, than last year? It's both. Uh, it's slightly higher for diesel fuel and slightly lower for uh, gasoline. Um, it's, it's expected, anticipated, that the diesel fuel may cost about $1,000 more next year than what we had approved last year. So and okay. about 20 bucks lower on uh, gasoline. 
a net of 980. But good. Uh, any other questions from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the approval of the Bucks County Consortium fuel bid for this coming year, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Final item under our report, Mr. Chairman, is the uh, authorization to approve the lease with municipal finance uh, for the purchase of two public works vehicles. Uh, please recall that we had ordered these vehicles back in November of 2022 um, at slightly higher elevated prices than uh, we had anticipated, which led to um, an overall <coughs> cost overrun in the budget. To uh, offset that, we've asked municipal finance to structure the loan uh, to comply with what's in our budget this year, which is approximately the combined uh, amount of $40,000 for the two trucks and then spread the remaining payments over the next following two years. <coughs> uh, the, the quote is included in the board's packet for review and the appropriate motion would be authorization to approve the lease with municipal finance for the purchase of two public works vehicles through CoStars. Do we have that motion? So moved. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board? I'm just looking at the numbers here again. Uh, any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the lease with municipal finance for the purchase of two public work vehicles through CoStars, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have under my report. Great. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Ms. Snyder. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of our June 14th, 2023 meeting. We have, a, <clears throat> we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any comments about the, the motion to accept the minutes? None from the board, do we have any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the June 14th, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. I'd like to make a motion to pay our bills uh, for June 28th, 2023 in the amount of $353,628.62. We, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? From the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of paying our bills as uh, noted on the June 28th bills list say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. I'd like to make a motion to approve the total of intra and interfund transfers for that same date, June 28, 2023. We have a motion. Do we have a second? In the amount of $270,000. Oh. $270, I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of approving our interfund transfers for June 28, 2023, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. I'd like to make a motion to approve our bills list for July 12, 2023, in the amount of $480,471.16. Motion, do we have a second? I'll second it. Do um, we have any discussion from the board? I, I have a comment on uh, page one. Bagley Law Firm uh, legal consulting fees of $6,427.50. Worth every penny. Thank you, Mr. Bagley. Okay, there's a comment. Uh, do we have any other comments from the board or the public? Seeing none, 
I'll call the question. All those in favor of paying the bills as listed on the July 12th bills list say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries 3 1. Finally, I'd like to make a motion to approve our intra and interfund transfers in the amount of $385,542.91. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Sure. Motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of uh, Paying our interfund transfers as for July 12th, 2023, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 4 1. 4 0. 4 0. Okay. That brings us to our second round of public comment. Um, please come up to the podium, state your name, where you're from. And it's all yours. I was waiting for you to finish, so I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, my name is Bradley Cooper, a uh, Newtown Grant resident uh, since 1999. And um, I first uh, just want to say I've been up here a lot, uh, like some of the other residents, and, and do speak sometimes. Um, I do get a little abrupt, but I've lived in this area since 99, and I don't want to see Newtown crumble to what it seems like is going on. We're approving these businesses to go in certain areas. We're approving developments to get made in certain areas, and it seems like that the area is just growing and growing. Yes, growth is good. Uh, moving the township to be better, to help uh, you know make Newtown uh, as good as it is today, uh, but it seems like that some of these issues that continue to get uh, brought up are only, you know, only get cared about in certain aspects. So there's certain things that we spend all of our time worrying about and other things we just put a little bit of effort in. And I don't think that that's right, that there's a multitude of issues and we need to look at all the issues and actually look at what's going on. How does it really benefit the township or benefit the citizens that live here and then make a decision on that and not just go and say, oh, well, this is not a big issue, but this one is being a bigger issue because 50,000 people are talking about this. So let's worry about this and then push this issue to the side. Um, kind of like some of the other uh, uh, things that have been brought up today, which I know I'm not supposed to talk about too much of, but we've, you know, we've uh, talked about how we don't want certain things to be in Newtown. Residents have brought up we don't want certain things to be into Newtown. We know these things are coming about and going to happen, that there's going to be litigations and fighting about this, that our zoning laws, as I brought up, are kind of outdated. And these things seem like, oh, it gets to the point where, in my view and opinion as a resident, not knowing all the legality of everything or how to change anything or do anything other than voice an opinion, hoping that you guys as my representatives will represent Newtown, that these things get to the point where it's like, oh, why well, can't do nothing? Oh, I knew this was coming six years ago or four years ago, and I didn't do anything about it. It seems like that we don't want to work to make sure that we get to a point where we can stop something from happening when it gets to the point where we're getting possibly sued or when people are getting told that you can't do this or you can't have that or that you're zoning laws don't have this or whatever and a lot of residents are feeling kind of uh, you know disappointed in different aspects on certain things that have transpired um, by decisions made uh, before you guys during you guys and maybe after you guys or whatever that uh, we want to have a future where people like myself that once have a family and still live in Newtown doesn't feel like oh I'm starting to live somewhere that is over congested overpopulated uh, you know every corner there's a home or there's 50 million cars and and the street that I live on, I got to wait five times to get through a red light because of how much traffic uh, that the streets cannot handle because they're not built to have 1,600 cars driving down at like Durham Road when more and more traffic ends up coming because of different businesses or different townships allowing more uh, homes to be built on Durham Road for using that as an example. So I just hope that with stuff that was talked about today, that we knew about this stuff that was happening. We 
knew this was coming, and it seems like we just forgot about it and been like, oh, we'll worry about it when the time comes. So I hope that you guys, um, you know, show the residents of Newtown that you really care about Newtown, that you're going to fight and try to prevent stuff like what happened today from happening and getting built because a lot of residents don't want this. You know, the wall wall issue or whatever, I'm not going to get into because um, that's a touchy subject. There's people that want it and don't want it. This is something that nobody wants. There's not one person that you could talk to that says, I want a, you know, a five-story building put in my township that could have two or three hundred people there with two or three hundred cars. There's not one person I know that wants this compared to, let's say, a Wawa. So I, I hope you guys can do your very best to stop this because we knew about this. And I even went to a joint juncture meeting and listened to you guys all say, we don't want this. So I hope you guys can stop this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. John D. April, Newtown Grant, biggest and the best. Uh, good stuff, Bradley Head. Um, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, what somebody called Newtown Armageddon. Uh, where were they when um, Al Fiddler uh, asked for a variance uh, to, uh, a slight variance to build a garden store? And uh, he got shot down. The great Alan Fiddler ran our planning commission for so many years. And uh, for lack of a garden store, he wanted to sell a few lawnmowers and stuff. Enhance his uh, uh, garden business he had there. And, uh, you know, what happened? He said, hey, Toll Brothers, go buy this. And certainly Toll Brothers bought it and built Newtown Walk. Who's up here complaining about traffic? If you let Alan had his store, would have been that, you know, would have been a, a problem with traffic. Uh, build houses elsewhere. Uh, we'll share a walk. Uh, years back, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of you guys were asleep. Uh, they wanted to build a golf course. Didn't do it. Didn't, didn't allow it. The main thing, Stockburger. Stockburger wanted to build on the bypass where you're going to have a Wawa now. Shot it down. Long-time Newtown resident, just like Alan, uh, you know, wanted to build, put his uh, uh, car dealerships over there. And what happened? The, the dealerships, uh, you know, pulled his chain to outdated facilities and things like that. It's no longer there. Well, we're going to have Wawa there. Uh, going way back, even before my time, uh, Newtown Grant. That was the biggest thing. Of course, most of the people who complained about it are, are gone now. They, they, they passed on, moved away, whatever. Um, you know, all, all this stuff, Newtown Armageddon. Where, where was the talk about Newtown Armageddon back then? No, 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 didn't have that. It's it's common thing. Uh, what do you want when you're uh, uh, about 10 miles away from the, the city limits of Philadelphia? I tell people all the time, these old timers that complain about it, and I'm an old timer now, but uh, people a few years older than me at least, you know, uh, you know, Philadelphia's 10 miles away. You kept it nice for so long. You know, nice for me to come up here and, and all that stuff. Uh, you know, hey, be thankful. Uh, this is progress. Uh, all uh, suburban areas around any major city, it, it's growing. It's growing and everything. And uh, I happened to be in Montgomeryville last week. And uh, this is Royal Farms mascot because they, they're good uh, with selling chicken. Uh, they asked me to, uh, you know, see uh, Mr. New uh, Mr. Uh, Newton Armageddon if he knew a good place for uh, in the township to have a royal farm. Since we're going to have a Wawa, uh, a lot of people like their chicken. I never had it, but I, I was I happened to be there uh, last week. So uh, think about you guys. Got to think about what you authorize and what you do because uh, you know the few things I mentioned there. You know. Uh, Change, change the face of Newtown. And, uh, you know, you shoot things down, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times you get something worse. And, you know, I, I, I used to say all the time, how could you shoot down Allen Fiddler? How could you shoot down uh, Stockburger? They, they, they're such good residents. They were here for so long. And, you know, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any others? Okay. <clears throat> that brings us to old business. Do we have any old business? New business? Any new business? We covered some territory this evening. Uh, there was no executive session. Uh, so without... Uh, uh, Mr. Yes. Chair, may I get, uh, ask the solicitor a question? Um, do you see the need for an executive session after, in light of what happened tonight, that maybe we should discuss, since we are in litigation, this is something that we could, I'd rather discuss it in private than have the discussion up here. Uh, I'm, I'm just asking the board if they would like to have a brief executive session. Yeah, I, I would recommend it. I would recommend that it be held <clears throat> after we receive um, the counter arguments from council and I have a chance to distribute them to the board um, and you can digest them and I can fill you in on the law a little bit and uh, we can we can discuss the uh, various motions that were made at the uh, first hearing. Okay. Um, perhaps, uh, and again, we're, we're meeting once in, uh, <clears throat> once in August, um, which is less than 30 days from today, probably um, hold that at your regular meeting in September before your September 13th meeting. Or is there a date on the <clears throat> is there a date on the books for an August work session, which might be outside of thirty days? Um, I, I was going to suggest that we have this, an executive session as well. I just didn't know the timing. Well, August ninth is your regular meeting. Uh, I guess we could, <clears throat> if I receive the documents prior to thirty days, and I I have them in hand, and and you have them in hand. Um, perhaps we could uh, do it prior to our August 9th meeting. Um, so I don't want to rule that out, but why don't we play that by ear? Uh, an executive session does require uh, 24 hours notice to the board of the executive session, so um, we would have to have everything in hand by probably the 7th or 8th of uh, August in order to hold that executive session. I would like Mr. Bagley to be there as well somehow live or on the phone is that possible uh if that's the board's um direction then we can certainly request that mr bagley be present well what do you think guys chirp I chirp thought, chirp <laughs> are you hearing crickets i'm hearing crickets <clears throat> i hadn't considered that as a possibility um why not I, didn't, I, I mean, that's what we're paying him for. I the mean, ins and outs. This has to do with the whole uh, Megillah here. We're paying him to be uh, to represent us. Well, he, he's also one of the litigants uh, in the matter. Um, he is, in quotes, representing the township, but he's de he's defending the ordinance while it's being challenged by the applicant. <clears throat> it's uh, it would be like a, a judge bringing in one side uh, of a case and excluding uh, the other side. And I don't want to be accused of um, playing fast and loose with, but with the, those rules. But this is an executive session you're talking about. You're That's not correct. talking about a trial. That, I, I'm talking about deliberation of the motions that were made by this body as a quasi-judicial body. Um, and I don't think it's appropriate to invite one if you don't invite the other. I certainly don't want to invite Mr. Uh, what's his name. So, so I, I would say maybe we could we could come to a conclusion on our own. Well, I don't know. Mr. Bag recited specific uh, law, and I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not sure um, Mr. Sander is. Uh, familiar enough with it. I well, Mr. Sander is familiar enough with the law on this topic and will be able to advise the board accordingly. All right. And we have the motions. So do we want to want to play it by ear and, and do a possible executive session on August 9th, before your August 9th meeting? And if not, we will come up with another date for uh, an executive session prior to uh, the next hearing. Yeah. Thank you. You know, maybe including the August work session, if there is a date on the calendar for an August work session. Would that be August 14th, Mr. Lewis? 
Let's see. It's the 14th, it's the second Monday or the third Monday? Uh, it's the second. second Monday of August. It's the Monday between, well, it's the first Monday between your two August meetings, but we're not meeting on the 23rd. We have an EAC meeting on that second Monday of every month. <clears throat> on August 14th. Yeah. Would okay. You, Maybe we could can, can men say an executive session and at 6 o'clock prior to the, the EAC, EAC meeting, or we can, we can work around it if it becomes necessary. Yeah. Hopefully the 9th will work. Yeah, hopefully the 9th will work. In fact, I could probably reach out to the parties. That gives them... Um, Actually, it's it's four full weeks from today. Yeah. Uh, it's 28 days, yeah. uh, but uh, it is four full weeks from today. So I'll, I'll I'll ask them to try to have their materials in before then. All right. Any other business? Seeing none, and without objection, I will adjourn our meeting this evening. Thank you very much.